Welcome back to another episode of Wild Country right here on DoD TV. This week we'll tag along with the master muley guy at Austin Land as he welcomes future father-in-law, the madman Mark Drury to camp. Does our expert big game guide have what it takes to close the chapter on a prize mule deer named Meatloaf? Is Austin willing to do anything for love? Or maybe he won't do that. This segment of DoD TV is brought to you by Leopold. Be relentless. So here it is, it's the opening week and Mark and Wade just flew in from Iowa. Taylor's already there. I've been super excited, but also very nervous about hunting with Mark. The anticipation of hunting with him, just because I know his past of hunting mule deer, going up to Alberta with Corey Jarvis, they've done an awesome job. So me as a guide, I'm actually a little bit nervous knowing how good Corey is. So it's time to put on a show. So here we are, fall 2018, and we're gonna start the season off mule deer hunting like we've done so often, although we're changing it up just a little bit this year. Taylor is going after her first mule deer. Yep, first mule deer hunt, and uh, it's gonna be fun because Austin is guiding Dad and Tom. Guiding. There he is! Hi, Austin. How are you, Mark? I'm of good. course, he gets the see first time. Yeah, great to see you. Hi, Dave. How are you? Yeah. Hey, that's my guy. Okay. Oh, sorry. We're gonna do a little bit of high country mule deer hunting. It's gonna be different than the plain stuff we've done with Corey for so many years, and I promise not to say all week. That's not how Corey does it. I'm, I'm not going to say. Promise. I promise. Because I go really fast and really hard. Right now. There you go. Well, <laughs> I'll Corey would never do that. Yeah. On our way from the airport to go shoot the bows, we make a quick pit stop at the old Cabela's. We have arrived. Let's Finally. get this season started, kids. Heck yeah. Our favorite place. Who are those weirdos? Trip wouldn't be complete without a stop. So on our way back from the airport, we stop at the house. We gotta let a couple arrows fly. We get the PSE dialed at the Morel targets, and we're off to the mountain. When we first get to camp, we go over some trail cam pictures. I go over the Onyx maps with Mark to show him where the water holes are, what certain target bucks we're going after. We got a short night's sleep, and then we're on to the mountain. The target buck we're going after is Meatloaf. He's a big four by four, six year old deer we have tons of history with, but he's a mountain buck. And I don't think Mark's ever hunted mountain bucks. He's always been in the plains of Alberta. So it's kind of my turn to show him that's the plane game, let's go play the mountain game. It's time. It it's is time. officially day one, morning one of our mule deer hunt and we're ready. It feels amazing outside. First opening day of the season. So today you're with Tom, I'm with Austin. I think we're hunting relatively close to mm -hmm. each other. So if you guys find a deer, you call us, I'll come stalk it. If we find a deer, I'm gonna go stalk it, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm excited. I am so jacked today. This should be awesome. Dude. Oh, I'm jacked. So it's our first morning out. I'm excited. We got high anticipation of finding meatloaf. You know, we get out there knowing it's only the first day, my stress level is pretty low but I still want to show him meatloaf. When we're in, in Canada with Corey, we cover a lot of ground, right? Um, because it's a lot of cropland stuff, you know, we're more in the foothills. What's your tactic? You covering ground or you? We, we get high and we glass. We get up on the highest peaks we can and cover a lot of country with the binos. And our biggest saying up here is wear your back pockets out before your boots. You know, sit down and glass because you're gonna, a buck could be laying out in the sagebrush or under the sarvis berries and he can't see him and he finally gets up just to reposition or change beds and you'll catch him. So you're looking for a, a buck, not necessarily already up, you're looking for one that might be already bedded or had just gotten up and repositioned. Right, yep. Another thing Mark isn't used to, which for me, it's just a day-to-day -day life thing, is we're glassing from anywhere from 500 yards to two or 3,000 yards with big glass. We got the loophole 15s, we got the spotters, and it's time to glass a long way. So, we, we found a little signal up here, and I just looked at deer cast, and it shows great today, tomorrow, the next day, and then good the rest of the week. So, kind of nice to see how deer cast relates to the mule deer out here. 
We had a great morning. We had some great footage, beautiful sunrise, hanging out with the future father-in-law, but no meatloaf. Oh, geez, that's a big deer. It's kind of crabby on the front. So there's two of them? Mm-hmm. So cool. We're just riding around glassing right now. It's kind of sprinkling, but two really pretty deer and moose. Hey, it's not every day you see a moose when you're hunting. We definitely don't have those in the Midwest. It's a nice moose, though. Oh, there's, there's his little buddy. Now there's both of them together. Well, it's 8 o'clock. We just got a little bit of service because we're up here on a high point, and Dad texted me and said that they filmed just one about 160-inch buck. Well, we've filmed four, so... I think we're learning who the better guide is here, Austin. Really pretty deer, just not, not mature. Tom said he, he's probably four year old. We're looking for five or older, so still a really nice deer. These mule deer are just absolutely beautiful no matter how old they are. Hopefully dad and Austin are seeing some good stuff this morning. So as midday rolls on, we go do some MRI. I place some Reconyx cameras out there during the July and early August month, and it's time to see what's been coming to the water. So it's been pretty dry over the course of the summer, so it was a good opportunity to throw a bunch of Reconyx on the water tanks that we have, both for the cattle and the wildlife. So we're gonna go grab the Reconyx card and go through Buckview and see if we have some MRI for either this evening or throughout the week. We, uh pulled this card today and Austin was talking about the water and how they got it in there and I mean the card results are they're awesome yeah probably a little better than we expected yeah too. there's a lot of mature deer on that card yeah, it's pretty exciting a little bit different from what we've done I was talking about it in the field we typically don't put cameras out in Alberta because we're always you just never know where to catch them but here we've got a magnet you know it's yeah. like whitetail hunting you might as well take advantage of the magnet yeah these dry summers water sources key yeah. for these bucks first time all summer I'm praying for no rain We're just meeting up, it's midday, about lunchtime. We're gonna do a little high country picnic together and then break off again for the late afternoon, evening hunt. But it's been a great morning. We've seen a lot of really pretty bucks, just not mature ones that we're looking for. Loving every bit of it. Well, we've been seeing some good deer. They're just all distant, which it's my first mule deer hunt, so I'm really not familiar with how it is all the time. Is it like that in Alberta? Definitely, uh, I think the difference that I see though, a lot of that is we're hunting crop fields yeah. and it's more confined. This country's gigantic, <laughs> yeah. you know, truly needle in the haystack out here. So yeah. uh, the glassing required here is much greater. You know, if you look this morning, you know, Wade's glass and I'm glass and Austin, Tom, yourself, mm -hmm. we're covering as much country because there's a lot of country to cover. This country certainly poses different challenges. You got to acclimate to the altitude. Yep. We've not had to do that uh, up there in Alberta and it's just bigger country. It's a little tougher spotting game, but we'll uh, we'll get it done. It's beautiful. No, oh, it's gorgeous, <laughs> man. A lot, lot of pretty things to spot, that's yep, for sure. for sure. So that afternoon, we go back after Meatloaf. We get up on the same ridge, we're glassing, we're glassing, we're glassing, and there he is. It's Meatloaf, the deer I wanted to show Mark. All right, we're back out uh, here this afternoon in Austin had footage through his phone scope the other day of a giant typical. Sure enough, he came out here this evening and immediately found this deer again. So now we've been looking for him and at him for about an hour and a half because he's in a kind of a tough spot to spot. So we're gonna go in here and see if we can't make a play on him. We got about an hour and a half of light left. We'll see if, we'll see if we can have some fun. Let's do it, buddy. For me, the relief is now gone. I've done step one. I've found the deer. I've showed Mark the deer and he loves him. 
Now we got the PSC in hand and we're going after him. Here we go. First stock of the trip on day one. Can't ask for more than that, especially with your future son-in-law. So we just ran into a, a bull on the way into this deer. In these quakies, you never know what you're gonna run into. I just got a text. Dab and Taylor, 50 yards in Beaver, which is just the drainage right across from us about three or four. Oh, we're pulling for you, Taylor. Seriously, it was the most amazing day. We just had an awesome stalk encounter. It was not a target buck, but so cool to be within 25 yards of a wild mule deer. And I was sitting there thinking, gosh, I hope Austin and Dad are having a stalk like we were, but we're gonna go look for some new bucks in the morning and get back after it. I'm out of breath. Got to where we thought they might be side of them, which means they went further into those trees, right over my right shoulder. That being the case, it is not a wise decision to pursue into those trees without knowing exactly where they are, so we're going to let them be tonight and try them again another day. After that, our hopes were still pretty high. We found Meatloaf. He doesn't really know what spooked him. He goes off into the trees pretty slowly. We sneak quietly back out, get to the truck, and start heading our way back to camp. That's one way to end the day. A pretty buck to end a pretty day. At the end of the day, we ended on a couple high notes. You know, we found Meatloaf. We saw a couple really pretty bucks on the way back to camp. Tomorrow's looking promising. Thank you for watching this episode of Wild Country. <laughs> We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This segment of DOD TV was brought to you by Ram Trucks. Guts Glory Ram.